so this horse's hooves are quite long too. You can see actually right here in the front that she's chipped it off a little bit. She's tried to do some self-trimming right there. Didn't really succeed. Oh, tried over here too. You can see this flap that's sticking up. So yeah, basically we we're looking at this foot and you can really see how it needs to be trimmed. There's a lot of excess wall, especially in the area of the toe. So I'm gonna remove all that. And you can see on this side too, it's she's chipping off in the quarters. And that's where most horses will actually chip off first because that is the weakest part of the hoof wall. So I'll get started. And I'm basically gonna trim from the quarters forward first because I know looking at her balance from the top, her long toe is pushing her into a negative plantar angle or palmar angle. Palmar means the front hooves, plantar means the hind hooves. So working on her front hooves. So this is a, a palmar angle. Okay, so I don't wanna take tons of heel, especially with my nippers. I'm gonna do more of that detailing with my rasp. Same through the quarters. There's some more dirt right there. It didn't get off. Maybe it's hoof wall too. I guess it's hoof wall too. So I'm gonna go straight to my rasp. I don't really wanna take my heels down any more than that. But my toe and my quarters can come down still quite a bit. Oh, it'd be good if I didn't drop my tools. And you can see now that I've rasped down to close to the height that I would like, there's still a lot of wall in the toe to remove. I'm gonna take my knife to this area where the, it's laying over a little bit. Take some of that sole that she's letting go of off. Just very thin swipes there though, because I usually, let barefoot horses exfoliate that area. Now I'm gonna nip some of this excess toe length off. And then I'll do a little bit more beveling from the bottom. Make sure that heels where I want it. And I'm not really touching too many frogs right now unless they have really big, big flaps hanging off because the frogs are kind of swollen and not truly where they would be as far as height's concerned. I might open up the groove a little bit, take off that, but otherwise that's a really healthy frog so I don't want to remove any tissue that the horse might actually need. So now I'm going to finish this hoof from the top. smooth everything off and you know look at the hairline a little bit too because that'll show me if I have any big flares and or dishing in the wall. Flares would refer to kind of from these toe pillars back going out like that deviating in that way and dishing refers directly to the toe. If there's a flare in a toe we call that a dish. But she is also getting really good nutrition. So her hoof wall is pretty nice and smooth. Not too much deviation anywhere. So that's it for that front hoof. So when the toe gets long, I'll usually trim the fronts first because horses generally carry two thirds of their weight on their front end. So if I do the fronts first, first of all, it's a safer place for the horse to kind of get introduced to you and get comfortable with you working on its hooves. Uh, Cause if anything's dangerous, usually it's the hind end. So working on the fronts first gives that horse time to get acclimated to me and comfortable with what I'm doing in an area where I'll be safer in case they don't like what I'm doing. And if I think there's anything that might be causing the horse discomfort, I'll usually try to do that hoof or those hooves first so that when they're standing, 
and I'm working on the hooves that are comfortable and they have to stand on the ones that aren't, maybe they'll be a bit more comfortable. It's hard to see when the hoof wall is the same color as the dirt. Like I think I said earlier, these are not my usual nippers that I trim with. They're just slightly different, so I'm not quite as accurate using them as I am with the pair that I use every day on client horses. Okay, so just removing that extra wall length. I'm gonna smooth it down, not taking too much heel because I wanna keep her a little bit more elevated in heels because she likes to grow a long toe which puts her at a poor hoof pasture and access. Hoof pasture and access. Access, not access. Man, I can't talk this morning. I tried to get up early to beat the heat. I think it's gonna be like 95 today, which is not like super hot, but when you add in like 90% humidity, it starts to feel pretty hot pretty fast so not really gonna take anything on that frog it's in pretty good shape other than being covered in dirt so I'm gonna finish this hoof I think mostly from the top maybe bevel a little more through the heels and through the quarter because that's an area that's a little bit more difficult to get a good bevel on from the top I don't want to leave a sharp edge there. I want the back of the hoof to be as comfy as possible so that she'll load it first while she's moving. Just gonna finish this bevel. Once again on this horse's front, she doesn't really have any dishing or flaring. So there's not much of that to address from the top. Just really removing excess material and then giving her a good bevel and making sure all those edges are smooth. Because I pretty much balanced everything from the bottom. So I'm feeling around the edges, making sure I can't feel anything sharp. Oh, hi, sweet girl. She likes, she's one of those horses that likes to rest her head on my shoulder sometimes. Okay, here, have it back. Okay. Get the mud out. Got another horse next to me. Well, not next to me, but next to the horse I'm working on. Hopefully it doesn't cause me any problems. Otherwise I'm gonna have to pause and ask him to leave. I do have a place to trim at home that is like away from the other horses, but I've nowhere to tie in there because that other place is inside the shop. And then I need somebody to hold for me. So lots of exfoliating sole on these horses' hinds today. No, go away, go away. He's so inquisitive. He just wants to be in the mix of everything. And thankfully this is this horse's son so she doesn't mind him too much but this is not really safe trimming practices if you don't know the horses this could get you kicked really easily or have the other horse spook if the horse that's coming over is more dominant than the one that you're working on or has a higher pecking order than the horse you're working on so really like this is going to be an episode of do as I say, don't do as I do. Mister, you're gonna have to leave. Okay, now you're bugging me. Ah, oh, you're so persistent. So on this hind, she likes to, she'll, like a lot of horse, or typical quarter horses, she'll grow high on this medial side that I'm rasping right now. Oh, I've got another horse on the other side of me. And then she will flare out on the lateral side. And I see that, no. <laughs> and I see that a lot on heavy muscled horses, which she is, she's got a lot of muscle. A very common wear pattern. As long as it's on both hinds, if you only see this wear pattern on one hind, I would be concerned because that means there's some sort of asymmetry or imbalance going on somewhere. But usually on her, both hinds look exactly the same. So I'm looking for any little loose 
areas of wall or pockets that could be harboring thrush, but I don't really see any. I'm gonna float this area of her quarter just a little bit more because it dips down a little bit. It's kind of a balance to that when you're trying to balance some asymmetry in the hinds. You wanna take the majority of the height off of the medial side and then, oh, Conway, go away. I'm not gonna scratch your butt. And then remove the flaring from the top. But yeah, it's, it's a balancing act. You kind of have to find what recipe works for each inv individual horse. But if you didn't take this side down and took this side down too far, you would create a sheared heel. This heel would get pushed up high and this heel would sink down lower than the other one. Okay, we're gonna pull that hoof forward to finish it. Well, no, I saw one more thing. This bar is just a little bit high after rasping down that hoof wall. So just wanna remove it. Okay, now we'll bring it forward. Sometimes the horses, when they like the trim you've given them, they'll want to stand on the on the hoof you've just trimmed on the bottom. And they sometimes they'll be less inclined to pick it up and give it back to you to pull it forward. And they're not trying to be stubborn. They're just like, hey, I like this one better now than I like the other hoof that's next to it. <laughs> And I would prefer to stand on it now instead of have you put it back up in the air. Just creating my bevel, smoothing any edges. And this horse is a little bit more difficult to trim with her hoof forward on the stand because she likes to keep it very close under her midline. Her back end is very tight. A lot of horses with big muscles in their booties will do that. So I was trying to move some of that flare from the top on this side. I think it feels pretty smooth and just beveling everywhere else. So that hoof is done. We'll go to the other hind. Okay, last hoof on this horse. She really tried to do some self trimming on this one. You can see that when that medial side started to get long, she started hitting even harder on this lateral side and that's why it broke off in that area plus that's the weakest part of the hoof so just want to take some of the sole out first because that will help me gauge where my wall height needs to end up normally i don't have to do that because the horses aren't exfoliating any sole so I already know where my wall height's gonna be. You'll see farriers putting shoes on do that a lot because they have to find the right amount of toe to remove before they put the shoe on because that horse that's getting shoes is not gonna exfoliate that area of its hoof. When you start to run into problems is when anybody, whether a, a barefoot trimmer, trimmer or a farrier or any type of hoof care provider starts to dig out the sole that is not white and chalky like we see on this foot. When you get into slick, smooth material, you're starting to remove too much. You're going too deep. So in some rare cases where the sole is very compacted and retained, you may have to remove some slick material for the overall well-being of the horse. But generally speaking, as a, as a rule of thumb, you don't want to dig into the sole. So the theme today on this horse has been long toes. And every hoof I've rasped, after I've done my initial rasping, I've had to come back and do a verti vertical nip to remove excess material. So this frog too is the only frog that's really had some growth that needs to be removed. Like I said, the frogs are really wet and swollen. So I wanna be kind of careful and not go much further than that chalky layer that we're seeing right here, okay? Because she needs this material. And it's okay for this horse to kind of exfoliate some of this on their own. Like, they will do that. We don't have to take everything off. When in doubt, always leave them a little extra. 
for them to wear off themselves when they're barefoot. Put my knife back. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little bit more beveling. Smooth that off. And then I'll finish this hoof from the top. You can see the wear pattern is quite similar to the other hind, so I'm not concerned about that flaring. So I'm gonna take all this excess off from the top side. Otherwise that looks pretty good. So you can see this side is definitely flaring out where the wall didn't break off. So I'm gonna address that first and really bring it down from the top. So I'm, I'm not removing wall height when I'm doing that, but I'm bringing the wall in, if that makes sense. Because I don't, I removed all the height that I wanted from the bottom. I don't want to remove anymore. I just want to remove that flaring and not going too high because I don't want to compromise the integrity of the hoof wall, right? But I want to remove that area from contacting the ground where it was. It's hard to get that area smooth. So what I'm probably gonna do is pull the hoof back behind this horse one more time to make sure I re-smooth this area from the bottom like it looks nice and beveled, but I can feel a sharp edge right here that I need to get from the other side and finish it from that angle. Sometimes that happens. So otherwise this hoof is done. So like I was just saying, I created a sharp edge right here. So I just want to smooth that back down a little bit. I don't want it to be that sharp at the ground surface. If you're going to bevel the foot, the most important area to bevel it is the part that they're walking on. Okay. And I'm glad I looked at it again because now that I've taken so much of the lateral, this medial toe quarter has become unbalanced with the west, rest of the way I trim the hoof. So yeah, sometimes it's good to have a second look and take this heel down just a couple of swipes. Anytime you're rebalancing, it's good to take a second peek at the bottom when you're all done creating your bevel. Okay, that's about done for this hoof. So now that I'm all done, the angle of the hoof wall to the hoof pastern axis is much better. Still like to see a bit more heel. Probably be improved if I trim this horse more frequently. This was only five weeks of growth for her though. So sometimes it's hard for me to keep up this time of year. But ideally, I trim back her toe every two to three weeks to get the balance that I'm looking for. So I always tend to catch up in the winter when their feet are going slower, get everything realigned. And then in the summer, sometimes it just falls apart again. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. If you have any comments or, or questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. And uh, I'll do my best to um, give good answers and explanations for those questions. Got another visitor. Just won't leave me alone today. Like I said, probably this is a good example of do as I say, not as I do. Because if I was trimming client horses in this situation, I would be concerned. <laughs> At home, a little less concerned. But if I was practicing safe practices of trimming, I would not be trimming this gray mare where there were other horses around that she could get upset about. So anyway, thanks again everyone for watching.